Hello and welcome to Auto Shenanigans. How the devil are you? Have you had a good week? My name is John. Thank you very much for joining me for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. In this week's potentially short episode, I'm in Manchester to look at the five mile long M67 motorway. The M67 runs from Denton on the east side of Manchester to Mottram on the east side of Manchester and there are a total of five junctions. The original plan and concept for the M67 came around in the 60s and the idea was is that it would be a trans-Pennine motorway linking the centre of Manchester to the M1 at Sheffield. By 1978 the first section which was called the Hyde Bypass was completed and that ran from junctions 2 to 4. The section that goes between junctions 1 and 2 was added a bit later in 1981. As mentioned the original idea for the M67 was for it to run into the centre of Manchester, most likely following the course of today's A57 and then linking up with the A57M. We can see evidence of this intention at Junction 1 where we find the makings of a flyover that would have seen the motorway continue. It was installed in preparation for further extensions of the M67 but as is often the case that part of the project was cancelled leaving these bits of carriageway nowhere to go. Also in preparation for the motorway they spent a lot of time and effort demolishing everything on the route into Manchester only to then change their mind. I'm sure that went down well with the locals. Between junctions 1A and 2, the M67 curves its way through Denton, doing its best to divide the town right down the middle. It's the perfect example of an urban motorway at its best, if there is such a thing. Both junction 1A and 2 are missing a set of slip roads, but when combined, they allow for traffic movements in all directions. I'm sure they did this to help with traffic flow around Denton, but is it just me that thinks this is a really stupid idea? For example, if you live in East Denton and want to get to the train station, you've got to fanny around on all of the local roads when a set of slip roads at Junction 2 would see you there in no time. Just after Junction 2 and the motorway crosses over the River Tame. Not to be confused with the River Tame in the West Midlands, this River Tame starts at the Redican Dean Reservoir and runs for about 30 miles down to Stockport where it meets up with the River Goit. The motorway viaduct marks the point at which the M67's two sections were joined together following the last section's construction in 1981. Just by Junction 3 on Commercial Street is the site of the former Newton Bank Printworks. It was built in the early 1800s and by 1908 was producing some of the first wax prints. The company was then bought out in 1959 and it became known as ABC Wax. It was then sold again in 1992 and the new owners moved all of the production over to Ghana, meaning by 2007 all production on the site had ceased and by 2014 the remaining buildings were all demolished. Leaving Junction 3 behind and we soon passed the Godly Reservoir. It's part of a linked network of reservoirs that are all designed to provide a constant fresh water supply into Manchester. Godley Reservoir is linked to Arnfield Reservoir through a near three kilometre long tunnel through which water flows under gravity and it maintains the water levels here at Godley. Is it Godley or Godley? I bet it's Godley, isn't it? But I think I've said Godley all the way throughout. Too late now. It's also where we find the largest floating solar array in the country. It was built by United Utilities in 2016 and covers 45,500 square metres and it can generate 3 megawatts. And if you've got a large flat area, why not? This seems to make an awful lot of sense to me. We're nearing the end of the M67 now, approaching Junction 4, but on the way you might notice a set of ghost slip roads which seem to suggest that the motorway was supposed to take a different direction from this point. Indeed, as we mentioned earlier, the M67 was originally planned to go over to Sheffield. Of course this never happened, but had Junction 4 been built to plan it might have looked a bit like this. The original plan for the M67 continuing at Junction 4 was certainly an ambitious one. It would see the motorway make its way up into the Pennines and one idea at Woodford was for the motorway to reuse an old railway tunnel. Because this old railway tunnel was already there, it would have been quite a cheap option. But there was one problem, it wasn't really big enough to fit a full-scale motorway through it. So they came up with the idea of sending one set of lanes through the tunnel and another set around the side. This is the Godley Railway Turntable. It was constructed in the 1930s and it's got nothing to do with this video. I just happened to have stumbled across it. Nice. Last thing, and we're going to jump over to the M1 for a moment. If we take a look at Junction 35A, we can see a set of free-flowing slip roads that clearly are a bit over-engineered for the A616 that they connect to. These slip roads were actually built in preparation for a motorway connection that never came the M67. So why doesn't the M67 make it as far as Sheffield? Well, it turns out building roads across the Pennines is rather expensive and councils like to do what's called a cost versus benefit analysis and in this case they concluded that the costs far outweighed any of the benefits. So having built five miles of the M67 they cancelled the rest of the project and we're now stuck with that. But wait, there's more! In 2015, a study was conducted looking into the feasibility of building a trans-Pennine motorway linking Manchester to Sheffield. Sound familiar? The new road link could provide economic growth to an area that otherwise blah, 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 we've heard this all the first time. 
There's a few route options being considered, some using the M67, others not. And there is talks of constructing an 18-mile tunnel right through the Pennines. It would cost in the region of around £12 billion, and after one of those cost versus benefit analysis things, they've decided it's far too expensive and damaging to the environment, so they're not going to bother. And there we are then, guys. That's all for this week. I hope you liked the video. If you did, there's, of course, a button specifically for that. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. That would be wicked sweet awesome. Enjoy the rest of your week, whatever it is you get up to. My name's John. You've been watching Auto Shenanigans, and I'll see you guys next time for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.